So I know that your website goes into this, but mm -hmm. can you just tell us a little bit about how you got into doing music, like mm -hmm. how you got discovered and yeah. a little bit about that? Um, I was, um, it sounds so exciting. How did you get discovered? <laughs> was sitting at a coffee shop and an agent, I'm joking, um, <laughs> a Hollywood agent. Um, I, <laughs> I started playing um, music with my dad uh, when I was about 18, um, I, you know, he, he had, his repertoire of music is, is something quite, uh, quite, uh, well, it, it's ginormous. He knows about 400 or something ridiculous amounts of songs, and so I started figuring out that if I could uh, play music with my dad, because I only knew about 10 songs then, that he could fill in the gaps, you know? <laughs> Isn't that funny? But I, I didn't use him. I, I, love, I absolutely adored him, and I knew that we, it would be something really special for us to share together, you know. So I said, hey, Pop, how do you think about, how do you feel about <clears throat> playing coffee shops together? So that sounds awesome. That would be really exciting. And I got in a show by accident, um, you know, open, well, open mic nights, I used to go all the time, which is so funny. I, 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 I did go to one by accident last year, and it was horrible, and I... <laughs> And I remember putting my dad through that stuff all the time. It, it was so tragic. But um, and I think some of them are great. So forgive me for that. I just the one that I happened to go to last year. I, yeah, I, I thought and I thought of myself more or less of the songs I was writing at the time. And I felt so bad that I put people through through that. Thankfully, open mics are you only play about two songs, so you can't really damage anybody. <laughs> Not severely. But um. So I started playing these uh, open mic nights, and uh, this guy, one of the first ones I played, I, I think I played one song, i just written a song, and he said, um, how would you like to play a show here next week? And it was literally something, I don't think I'm exaggerating. If I had my journal, I, I might find that I'm exaggerating by a week. But it was something very soon after. Well, I, he said, you have the material for it, right, Rose? And I, I, be, I, did, I did lie, and I said, yeah, absolutely. I freaked out. It's like, how am I going to do this? You know, I only know like two songs or something. So I, um, I got my dad. That's how I got my dad on board. I was like, Pop, here's the thing. If you could play it too, and if I could talk a ton, I thought that's that's why I started talking a lot because I thought, if I could just talk a bit, then they'll I'll fool them and they'll think I filled like an hour and a half, you know. And I talked so ho 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 much about I was you know, and I had it all planned like. You know, it wasn't something it sort of took over me. It was really all planned. Like, okay, after song number two, um, try to kill about ten minutes, you know. <laughs> so just talk about my parents or, you know, a funny story that hit me that week. And uh, and then that's when I realized how much I loved both aspects of, of performance but also a storytelling and, and getting a kick out of it and making people laugh and then dreadfully going back to these really heavy songs. I think made people think I was just out of my mind, you know, but I never thought that because I, well, I never thought that because I know myself. I mean, I'm a bit, I'm <laughs> not, not all put together. Um, but I, I also know that people are built with such extremes. You know, we have great days and then we have days where we feel totally lousy or we have great seasons that are filled with utter joy and seasons that are filled with despair, you know, so I always thought the comedy and the joke part all made sense give them a tragedy but also my songwriting um, but also bring it up a little bit so it's not so heavy so my dad and I started playing music together then and it was great it was it was really fun and we'd switch off and he'd do some of his old songs that were really really adorable and we sang a lot together and then I about decided to go to theater school and I thought it'd be important to get a degree I think my parents were a bit worried about what I was doing with my life and so I applied for at Cornish. Um, somebody had told me about Seattle. I didn't know anybody here, um, <clears throat> and so I applied to go to Cornish for some reason. It was just, you know it was a theater school, and I thought, well, I'll just try try for it. And that summer, I started singing in a band, Valor 100, and we played these shows with Pedro the Lion, <clears throat> and which I thought was a Rastafarian band. That's how little <laughs> I knew of like indie music or you know anything. I was like, oh, they're gonna be so cool. I remember thinking that like he's probably gonna have some sweet dreadlocks. We're gonna really get along, <laughs> you know? and so we played the show in Detroit, and there was Dave, and I was like, "These guys don't look like hippies at all," you know, and uh, and then obviously to find out that they weren't Rastafarian, not even close. Um, well, I started telling them I'm thinking about moving to Seattle. They said, "Well, that's really amazing." And Damien Dorado was on that tour as well, and 
so we, we live in Seattle. Rosie, you should come. We'll, you know, we'll be your, we'll be your friends right away. And I was like, well, that would just be awesome. And so I came out, auditioned, uh, went to school at Cornish for a year. I didn't hate it, but I, 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 you know, I kept playing music in the meanwhile. I started playing with Damien a bit more often. And um, he asked me to sing on his Ghost of David record um, to do a solo on it, which was really, really uh, so generous of him. And I said, yeah, I'd love to do that. And so... Um, Sub Pop got a hold, of course, got the record, and before they put it out, they heard my voice and said, "Who's that girl that's singing on the record with you?" Oh, so dear friend of mine, and so um, they called me up and said, uh, "We'd like to come to one of your shows." And I didn't really know why. I thought maybe they just thought I had a fun personality. I thought, oh, maybe they're gonna hire me at Sub Pop. That'd be fun. You know, maybe I'll be a secretary <laughs> or something for the summer. And uh, so pa- Jonathan Podman came, who was, uh, you know, one of the big. Uh, the main guys there and he came to a show at uh, the Paradox which is in the U District at the time and uh, said when can we get coffee and talk about making a record which I told me he was crazy because he'd only heard about two of my songs and Damien was nice enough that night he knew Jonathan was coming to the show and it wasn't my show at all it was Damien's and he said Rosie I want you to play two songs of your own tonight I said why? He said because I think Poneman might be coming I'd like for him to hear them uh, okay and I still remember thinking, why is he coming, you know? And so it was afterwards, he, Jonathan came up to me, and when he asked me for tea, I didn't know who he was. I thought it was just, um, I didn't think he was a dirty man or anything, but I just didn't know who he was. So I said, no, thank you. I, I don't like tea or whatever it <laughs> was. And Damien said, that's, that's him, Rosie. So I said, oh, yeah, uh, I like coffee. That would be great. So that's how it came about, and he gave me a little bit of money and said, I would like for you to go and record four songs of yours, um, how, you, how you'd like to he- have them heard, however much I can give you for that, you tell me. So we came up with some figure, and uh, we went to Paul's Bow, uh, where Dave was living at the time, and uh, brought Eric Fisher and Damien Dorado, and uh, I think Dave as well, and we recorded four songs over a weekend, and it was really fun, and then we turned those into him, and he said, let's make a record. So. So then I didn't go back to Cornish, which was a godsend, because I didn't really want to, but I, I would have finished. But I wasn't really, I was good at theater, but I I, I just played the silly parts. I, I didn't love it enough that I wanted to play like the real, I was really bad at it actually. <laughs> I had to play a part from Raisin in the Sun, the play. I was so bad. I, I just, I kept making it comical. The teachers were like, it's really not a comical role, Rosie. You know, I mean, it's just not, you know. So I, I thought, I don't know if this is really the, the thing for me. But um, so, so it came, I should say it came along in a really, with really, in a uh, real great timing. And uh, I felt very fortunate for that, especially not having heard much of my music. I thought, this is pretty divine, you know. I can't really pass, pass up on this opportunity. And so... I started touring right away after that. 